Let me ask you something. If people told you your ideas were brilliant for a reason you didn't intend, wouldn't you agree with them? Sometimes success happens totally by accident, and video games are no different. Feel free to disagree with me if you didn't buy COD WAD just so you could play Nazi Zombies. As such, ever since the second game and the introduction of the Construction Zone, the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series has never really been about playing the single-player mode, but more about using it as a base to catapult you into the real meat of the experience, creating your own levels, sharing them, and playing the ones made by fellow players. Players. Tipping Stars realizes this. It's crafted a system and mechanics that feed into the level editor, encouraging you to build, share, and play far beyond the original scope of what any developer crafted mode could offer. How it does this is right in the title, Tipping Stars. Anytime you play a level online or in the solo mode, you're awarded stars based on your performance. These stars can then be used as currency in the workshop store to purchase more assets and tools for your own creations, allowing them to become more ambitious and allow for even more ideas to flourish. Alternatively, you can also give stars that you've earned to particularly impressive levels you find online so that the people behind them can do the same for their own creations. You're even awarded stamps you can use in Miiverse just for sharing the love. And before you ask, no, even if you score a gold trophy on every single one, you will not be able to get all the stars you need to purchase everything just by playing the house-developed levels. You will not even get close. This has created a wonderful little ecosystem of everyone trying their hardest to get views, get likes, and create the best levels they can to earn stars they need for that wonderful dream idea they have scratching at the back of their brain. It also leads to idiots posting flat stages that basically play themselves, but I implore you, if you do pick up this game, to make the right choice and not even touch these levels. What are they going to do with those assets anyway? Create a flat, golden room? Yeah, I bet that's exactly what the original developers had in mind for this system to be used for. That's not to say the solo stages are a complete afterthought, though. The, quote, story attached to them, maybe, but the stages themselves are pretty solid. In fact, the six worlds and the many bonus levels after serve as both an introduction to the various tools you can utilize in your own creations, as well as an inspiration on how to best utilize them for a puzzle-based experience. Magnetic walls, replaceable blocks and girders, multiple characters that all have to reach the goal together, and many more elements all combined to bend your your brain more than enough to be engaging. And like Contraption Maker before it, things start getting really interesting as soon as you start seeing how your tools interact with one another. Not to toot my own horn, but I made a few levels of my own that explore this very concept. Look for the Escape and Crossroads if you're so inclined, or just want to get a better idea of what I think good game design looks like. If you think about it, this is kind of a gutsy move if we consider the company involved. And this is a Nintendo game whose value drops significantly without the multiplayer aspect. If we're being honest, $20 would be asking way too much for just the single player content on display here. But if a healthy community of creative minds springs up around this title and continues to stick around, this could become an experience that'll keep you entertained for weeks. And don't forget that this game supports cross-buy as well, meaning if you buy the Wii U version, you'll get a download code printed on your virtual receipt for the 3DS version as well, and vice versa. Sadly, your save data does not transfer between platforms, meaning you can't take your favorite creations with you or import them onto the big screen. Smash Brothers had an excuse, what with the different trophies and stages, but with Capcom having pulled off the feat years ago with Monster Hunter, and especially with the implementation of something like the Nintendo Network, this seems like a pretty big oversight. But hey, you can also look at it like you're paying $10 for each version, which, all things considered, is a much better deal. So, in short, Tipping Stars is a community-driven puzzle game that mechanically rewards you for getting creative yourself. You can enjoy it both on your TV and on the go, but even if you are a big enough fan to have both consoles, your progress is version exclusive, taking a lot of wind out of the cross-platform feature. The solo mode is also quite short, has a pathetic attempt at a narrative, even by Mario standards, and is also needlessly difficult at times. I'm looking at you, 5-4. Still, if you like games like Little Big Planet, Tipping Stars will be right up your alley. So go forth, keep marching those minis, and never stop creating. Seriously though, check out my levels. Golden Mario ain't getting any cheaper.